Hey guys, welcome back to uh, channel and project one ton. Got the blue drawer off the truck. And if I got a story to tell you. Okay, so I wasn't gonna make this video because it was just gonna be the same thing over again with the black door. Marked all my dance. This time I took the window out just for convenience. But when I got down into here, uh, it was a bit of a rusty bit here. You know, I poked it with a hammer or whatever and it is too far gone for just a little fill up. So I've already gone ahead, cut the little patch that I'm gonna put in and it's basically gonna go in uh, right there. I'm just going to stay inside of, just like you see it, inside of the seam line and put this patch in but it's kind of crappy day I'm gonna grab the uh, black door the spare door and uh, put it on the truck just in case it rains okay so I had an idea while I was working on the blue door that I could hang the spare door on the truck well it didn't fit properly and once it latched it wouldn't open I mean, there's an absolutely huge gap here. That's not supposed to. That's not supposed to be there. I think somebody has buckled this door or done something to this door. I don't think it's just the hinges, but nonetheless, the latch froze on the first time I closed it, and I wasn't going through all that crap like I did before, coming in from the inside, cutting these studs off, jacking it, popping it, all that bullshit. Since the door was no good anyway, I just cut a hole through the outside with the cutting wheel, chopped through the latch, drove a screwdriver in alongside the post, the hinge opened up, the door now opens. Back to work on the blue door. Okay, so I don't think there's a whole lot of room to work inside of here. So I'm just gonna line it up and go around the edge where I think is gonna be good uh, with my magic marker, just like so. And as long as I stay inside the magic marker line, that should fit. Take your time with your cut. You just want to remove one single layer of material. Okay guys, so my piece just about fits the opening. From here, you don't adjust the opening, you adjust the piece to fit the opening. Uh, the piece is reasonably fitted in. A little bit of a gap there. I'm going to have to live with that is what it is. Uh, get the welder out, fired up. And hope I don't run out of gas again. Alright, so I guess I jinxed myself. I got it tacked in this far and I ran out of gas. Now fortunately for me, I got three or four welders around here. I could TIG weld that in. This is a nice seam here. I could TIG weld that seam. But uh, I think uh, I'm gonna pull out, got pulled out here, the old Mastercraft flux core welder. All these flux core welders are exactly the same, guys. Four heats variable wire speed doesn't matter who makes them it's basically just a transformer in a box with a wire feed so i'm dicking around here getting it dialed in and i think i'm ready to continue welding this patch in now about the patch uh if you can get it flush that's great uh it is here it is here uh, it is here, but it is under here at the bigger cracks, uh, is what it is. If you're going to do anything, 
let it sit low as opposed to sit proud okay or sticking up um, you can always fill it in it's a real pain in the ass to have to hammer this all down so it's the same height as this and then fill it in okay so got some tacks on I cooled it down with compressed air now you can definitely tell that flux core is different than MIG okay that's because it's a total opposite form of welding. MIG, the wire is positive, so you melt the wire onto the metal. Flux core, it's negative, so you got, you're actually heating the piece to melt the wire, if that makes any sense. Uh, so the piece gets hotter faster. Just these few tacks, this thing was scorching hot, I had to get it cooled off. So take even more time when you're flux core welding a patch in. It's way easier to warp the material. Just a word of warning. Okay, another little tip when you're flux core welding. Flux core leaves a lot of debris on the surface when you're tacking it in. So do a round, cool it off, take the wire wheel on the drill. get the area cleaned up where you plan to weld again you'll get a better start of the arc if you do that okay so you're ready for tip number three um, at this point uh, you'll be running out of spaces to put your little welds and you're gonna want to try to put a weld like next to a weld but your welder is set up, if you've done it right, to weld the base material and the patch together. Not the base material, the patch, and a big gob of weld beside it that's going to take an incredibly larger amount of heat to bond. So at this point, it's a good idea. Clean the tops off of these with a grinder, gently keeping the piece cool. So when you go back, you're only welding base metal a patch so quick once over with the flat disc uh, you can see where I have been and where I haven't been so now I can concentrate only on the spaces in between so I'm gonna finish welding this up and grind it up and I'll bring you back show you what happened so that's not too bad of a patch for dirty old flux core. <sighs> Time to get busy finish off the rest of this door. Patch looks good. Everything's roughed in. Repairs roughed in as far as I can go for today. I gotta get some aerosol on this, especially like bare metal spots. And you know what happened with the other door. So I gotta get this back on the truck, get the window in before it starts raining. So till the next one guys, Peace.